I met him, just as Alan first did, at his art school. Soon. Hi. I'm Andrew. Yes. Hi. So this is your this is your old art school. Yes. The uh, Academy des Beaux Arts. Yeah, Academy des Beaux Arts. Yeah. Can we have a look inside? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You met him when you were an art student. Yes, that's right. How old were you? Uh, Twenty-one. 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 Yes. And was this all? This was all an art school. Yes. I think it's about twenty-five students. Study. When do you think he got the idea that you might be able to help him with his book about fish? Uh, when he saw a lot of uh, artwork, and then he thought, my technique, he thought maybe it's very good for his book. And were you surprised, you know, when he approached you about, <laughs> well, about the idea of drawing some fish? Yes, I'm very, I'm very happy. With Soon as my guide, the next stop on the Alan Davidson Trail was the market. We're going to look at fish, which might not strike you as odd until I tell you that Laos is totally landlocked. However, it does have a major river, the Mekong. So soon, where do all these incredible varieties of fish, where do they actually come from to get to this market? They come from the Rio, uh, Mekong River and come from Padding Field. So they all just come from the Mekong? And the paddy field. Wow, that's a lot of fish for yeah, one the river. Rest, one river yeah. <laughs> the sheer variety of freshwater fish in Laos fascinated Alan Davidson. In particular, a mysterious catfish that lives in the Mekong, known to the locals as Paburk, and so rarely seen that Davidson thought it was extinct. Happily, it turns out he was wrong. But what is that? Oh, that one, I think, is Paburk. Paburk. That's the pabuk. Yeah, pabuk. Isn't yes. it very, it's very ve rare ve very to find rare. this? Yeah, very rare. I thought this fish was nearly extinct. And is that the head? Because the young girl in there, she said uh, she can't find the pabuk. She can't see pabuk 30 years. That's the first time she see it. She's 30 years old and she's only ever seen pabuk once. Yeah, that's, that's right. The first so, time. sorry, it seems to me that we're very, like we're, very ve we're, we're very lucky. Yeah, that's why you're lucky. Needless to say, Alan found a way to include his favourite fish in the Oxford Companion. Catfish. The largest, by weight, is the best. Indeed, one of the finest fish in the world for eating. This is the giant catfish of the Mekong, which may weigh over 300 kilos and measure three metres in length. Its eggs, referred to as lotion caviar, are eaten on rice cakes. Now, it's an amazing market, but it's it's much more than that. I think it's more than a phenomenally well stocked and picturesque market. And I think to understand what makes it so special, you have to actually leave it, <laughs> walk to the edge of it, and you'll see what I mean if you follow me um, through the valley of frogs and crickets. Um, come round this corner through the cycle park. And here, you'll, I think you'll get the point, because when you come to the margin of the market, you realise that it's actually sitting almost in the waters that fed it. It's right in the centre of this ecosystem, this extraordinary Mekong River ecosystem. So this is an absolutely living tradition. And over there, you can see the fishermen's huts, the little higgledy-piggledy platforms, people fishing, as they've done for centuries. It's an incredibly rare thing, this place. The book that Alan Davidson wrote while he was living here, The Fish and Fish Dishes of Laos, isn't so much a collection of recipes as a record of traditions, techniques and knowledge he clearly felt to be so precious they needed to be recorded for posterity. So I think he'd be pleased to know that 30 years later you can still use his essential gastronomic guide to the region to order all of his favourite fish. Barbecue. <laughs> Panin. That's the panin. Gop chai. Thank you very much. 
I think Alan Davidson wrote his book with a particular conservationist agenda that doesn't preach about what you should or shouldn't eat. For him, the preservation of nature and the preparation of food are two tributaries of the same ecosystem. Mmm. It's so good. It's such a good flavour, it's so pure. In fact, for me, the whole experience of eating here in Laos, it's all about purity. I mean, if you're talking about food culture, it's impossible to imagine anything further removed from the British example than this. You know, none of this food will have been sourced from a supermarket. It all came out of that river. The people who live here, the people who work in these restaurants, they shop in the market. There are no supermarkets for food here. So this is, this is stuff that has come out of that water. It's been cooked on that fire. It's been prepared in the way that was laid down by her mother, her grandmother, her great-grandmother. This is food as as a tradition, as a living tradition, in a particular place. And I think, I'm sure that all of this struck Alan, that he realised that what you have in a place like this is an astonishing kind of microsystem, a microecology, not just of, of the fish themselves and the people who cook the fish, but of human knowledge. And what he understood was that, as well as being um, what we eat, food can also be a fascinating kind of folklore. It's almost as complicated as a particular form of language that's evolved in a certain place. And I think that's, that wider message is really behind the whole of the Oxford Companion to food. But the appeal of Laos to Allen was as much sensual as intellectual. He was, as the old colonialists used to say, going native. And you can see that clearly in how he began to dress. He took to wearing brightly coloured silk shirts made in the local style by the tailors who work and trade in this street. And since I'd pitched my tent so firmly in the Alan Davidson camp, I felt I just had to buy one too. So what I'd like is this fabric, this one. Yeah. Uh, I should... No, nah, I can explain to you. No, no, it's OK, look, look, if you come with me... No, really, really, you will... Un... I have ways of making you understand. <laughs> this shirt, Puma, yeah, but with long sleeve, from this material, um, for me. <laughs> Once Alan had discovered um, this ceremonial shirt called the Puma. He had a whole load of them made in brightly coloured silks and it was achieving two things. Number one, he no longer had to wear a suit because it stood in for one. And number two, the Lao people actually loved the fact that he'd adopted native dress. It was a diplomatic...